Yeah, it's pretty awful sound to hear um, a parent screaming, because especially someone who's as strong as my dad, to hear them like kind of sort of screaming at the top of their lungs is uh, not a good feeling to have as a kid listening to that. And now this animal is on top of me and it's pulling me up on my backpack, like lifting me up and down with my backpack. So I'm going up from the bushes and I'm going back down again. Then I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If this would happen to Jenna, who had nothing on her back, she's gonna be ripped apart. That can't be. I need to take this animal with me. It needs to stay with me. So I'm just focused on, okay, this thing needs to stay with me. This needs to stay with me. So somehow I got a hold of it and I pulled it down with me about 30 feet off the trail. At this point, there was nothing I could do to help my dad. I had nothing with me. The bear spray was up on the trail. I didn't have a backpack. It was just me. So I looked around the ledge and I saw a little shrub kind of nearby. So I thought I would just kind of hide in there. So I went, ran over to it, got inside of the bush, and then laid in the fetal position, kind of covering, you know, holding my neck and just with my knees to my chest. I felt like no actual emotion, but I remember thinking like, I should feel something, this is happening right now. Like, whoa, I am going to die. Um, but it being all kind of like a matter of fact kind of uh, feeling, not like, oh, I'm gonna die, that's so scary, but I am going to die, period. I, I said kind of under my breath, oh God, oh God, just to try and get myself to feel some emotion. So I was waiting there. I was beyond scared, such that I didn't even feel scared. I just kind of accepted that I was going to die. I actually had grabbed the bear and I pulled it with me. But there was a 30 foot sheer drop, like, and it felt very calm in a way, because now I'm falling, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Not that I have pain anyway. And, I, and I'm down after the 30 feet fall, and I have this bear in my right hand. And I'm looking at it. It's a very strange realization when you have a bear in your hand, and it feels like you're pinching the scruff of its neck, but you really got your whole hand on it. And it's looking at you like, what did you just do? And with these big, you know, hazel brown eyes, like, I'm gonna take you out. There's no, like, emotion or anything like that. More like, I'm taking you out. Very calm, collected, like, I'm taking you out. So I'm like, I oh, know you're not. So I'm still holding on to this bear in my left hand, starting to crawl and trying to feel for a stone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this thing in the middle of the face with a big rock. But all I get is this shale that just kind of crumbles in my left hand. Like, yeah, I'm gonna throw the dust in, the, <laughs> in its face. It's really gonna get pissed off at that point, as if it's already not mad at me. So I'm like, no, 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 I have to get back in protective mode. But at least it's with me. It's digging on my head, it's like, clawing, it's digging in my arm, and I, I mean, I can, I can keep my, my hands back there, at least I think, and I slowly start to drift off. And it starts to feel like I'm in a, in a movie scene, and I'm a stunt double act for the main actor, that I'm getting hurt, and I'm thinking to myself, don't the production people of this movie realize that you also protect the, uh, the, the, the stuntmen, right? You keep them safe, and I'm not safe right now. I'm really getting hurt. And then I snap back and wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not a movie. It's not some some Wild West movie. This is reality. Ah! And then I felt this tooth going into my skull in the back. I'm like, oh, that's not good. Ah! And I felt another one. It's like, okay, if I keep, you know, this playing dead thing going much longer, this animal really wants to take my head off. And right before that, I already felt something crack in the bottom of my neck, so I knew something was broken. I looked down over the ledge, and there was like a few hundred foot drop. And I thought to myself, what's better? Should I just jump off the edge, or should I get um, mauled by a bear and die? Um, so I like contemplated it for a second, um, but I think 
I guess that shows that I don't really have a natural tendency to kill myself. Um, even in that situation, you choose self-preservation as best as possible. So that's why I guess I chose the bush. Okay, if, if I keep playing dead, I'm gonna be dead. And I have no help to my daughter anymore at that point. So I just need to rip myself loose and get out of this situation again. Not knowing what was below me, I ripped myself loose again and fell about 25 feet until my feet landed on that rock. And at that point, there's just, just blood and stuff all over. And I can't see out of my right eye, but I can see out of my left eye, and I can see down, and I can see, okay, uh, the next fall is going to be death, because that's a long fall that's coming after that one. So I remember the bear kind of looking down at me, and I'm pissed off. I'm really mad. And so I'm, I'm solid right now. If that thing comes back to me again, I'm going to just take it and just throw it off the mountain. It's quite unrealistic, obviously, but that's what you think at that point. So, okay, I'm like, okay, so it's not coming to me. And then it's gone, and then suddenly I hear a scream. Okay, now it's like my turn. The worst fear of a parent is to hear your, your child scream. She's gonna be ripped apart. The bear took my head in its mouth, and I thought, it's too bad that I'm not going to live past 18. There's a bazillion ways to top your kids' Rice Krispies. What's yours? A dash of fruit in their favorite color. A bunch of pineapples, because, hey, it's summer. A smidgen of honey in the shape of a flower. A handful of...